You know, I've been thinking a lot about something. Have you ever noticed how AI demos on YouTube blog work like a charm, but only when they're running on a local host and created by a developer with a couple of years experience over you? I click play in the top right, and there we go. Working agent, researcher, starting task, investigate the latest AI. It's like watching a magic show. Everything is seamless, everything is staged. It's all happening in a control environment. Well, today we're going to break the script a little bit. We'll go beyond the magic tricks and show you how we built our AI agent content solution using Crew AI for one of our corporate clients. But before we dive into the details, let me show you how the technical decisions you make as a business can drastically affect the value, all because of a different technical implementation. Let's quickly get back to our AI agent demos. You see on YouTube, are they really valuable? I, I, I bet you they're not. Only 0.1% of technically adept people can actually run and benefit from these dazzling AI prototypes. From my experience, the biggest barrier to ROI to all of these beautiful solutions like Crew AI agents or Autogen or place whatever is trending right now is the accessibility. Let me explain. If the company of 1,000 people and we created a business application for them using AI, but it has to be ran on a local host and um, by people who know how to, you know, start up a little Python environment and stuff. Um, then only three people can use this wonderful application. Your ROI is just limited to whatever 1% of that company can generate. But if you improve the accessibility, then you'll get on a rocket ship and retire. Well, not really, but you'll be very happy. This mission inspired our project. After figuring out the AI agent solution, we thought, okay, so in order for them to actually use it, they have to turn on the Python and then use it through the uh, terminal, just like every YouTuber um, demo you've seen. Well, that's not gonna help a lot of people. So then we're like, how can we boost our ROI? And that's exactly where we decided, hmm, well, it's gonna take a little more time is gonna be a little bit more expensive, but I think it will be more useful. So before we did that, we did the calculations of ROI for this AI generative solution for our corporate client. You could see it on the screen now. According to our rough calculations, having a solution hosted and available 24 seven via any device, it could be literally any device, just like you have your access to your Gmail we make it this accessible, will improve the ROI of this solution by over 2000% or even three times higher than just developing the solution itself. So for instance, on one side, you see on this screen, we have crew AI agent solution we created without accessibility. It only delivers 30% of its value with increased accessibility. So you get the full potential of this AI technology. But how do you do this, right? How? Well, the answer is a RESTful API. <laughs> Basically, on all the time and ready to work whenever you are. No need for local hosts or terminals. This is a high level overview with a lot of execution insight. I'll walk you through our journey of taking Crew AI solution and hosting it and making it available for us and our clients to call at any point. Our journey consists of three phases. Hosting, basically facilitating request scale and availability. Exposure, creating a public API interface. And uh, number three, delivery, building an end user UI UX. Some of the examples I'll have to blur out because we signed the NDA. But other than that, you will get the whole point, okay? Part one, hosting. Let's recap the problem statement. Our first priority was finding a hosting environment for our solution that facilitates on-demand requests at scale while ensuring a reliable uptime. We envision maybe, let's say, at least five people at a time, you know, at the, during the day, five to 10 people at a time continually asking stuff. So. So no single local machine can handle that. Also, it basically creates extra expenses for the client and extra things to worry about. So the cloud was definitely an easy choice. What we need is 
containerize dependencies and configs to transport this AI payload seamlessly cross-platform. All right, so what does it mean? It's basically um, Crew AI agent solution doesn't just work by itself. It has a lot of um, requ uh, requirements as far as what kind of environment it has to be in, what kind of other small application has to be assisting it or be available for it so it will function to 100%. We basically collected all of them together, put it in a little capsule and beamed it to the cloud. With Screw now neatly encapsulated, it came time for that dreaded moment, actually deploying it to a provider because you don't know how expensive it's gonna get. <laughs> the cloud, there is like, a, there was a big, pretty big movement against the cloud because the cloud is so expensive and people basically spending millions of dollars. So we went with very, very cautious approach to make sure that we don't end up with a $5,000 bill by the morning. We started with Render. It lured us in by generous free tier for open source projects, but we tried and guess what happened? It got killed. It's called SG kill or something like that. So it's basically a special command the cloud's environment will execute in if your application requires more resources than you're paying for. Yeah, so basically too hungry. Our application was a little too hungry. Then we upgraded to the next tier <laughs> and it crashed again, got SG killed again. So after crash uh, coursing, um, some optimizations to our um, deployment. We said, okay, you know what? Render is not the only provider on the block. We could try someone else. So we, we said goodbye to uh, Render. So after a little digging, we heard about digital, basically we found some information on DigitalOcean and we're like, okay, you know what? Let's give it a try. It looks easy. DigitalOcean sounds fun. <laughs> so we, um, tried it and uh, digital ocean interface abstracts a lot cloud hosting terms with its own terms droplets and all that and this abstraction didn't make it easier so uh, we tried for a little bit but then like uh, we had to leave it because after multiple um, run-ins with uh, interesting uh, naming convention for a lot of uh, functionalities uh, we're like you know what maybe um, we could find a better version somewhere else. Um, finally, we landed on Railway. It's basically another app-centric platform. Uh, when we start basically deploying it, there was some problems. Yes, there were some errors. Yes, there's a little bit extra requirement of your understanding on how to um, this cloud hosting solutions work. But after basically easily Googling everything and you know maybe spending a couple hours figuring it out, it was working really fast. Um, then, out of curiosity, because given that we had such a problem with render, out of curiosity, I looked in into the available memory and CPU power, and to my surprise, it was probably like three to four times uh, more resources, computing resources available for our application than render. Our crew AI agents were very happy um, chugging along on the Railways platform. Uh, as far as the web framework we chose to uh, run our application and, and be in charge of HTTP routing and basically exposing the APIs, we chose Flask because the uh, Crew AI is built on Python. The common choice would be use Python or, I mean, use uh, Flask or Django a web framework in order to stay within the Python environment. And Flask is very easy to learn and very easy to implement. It's one of the best ever. I would recommend it to anyone who would actually want to do what we did. So we structured the API across three different core endpoints, generate, fine tune, pipeline, all right? So generate in charge of just powering the crew AI agents to execute code, fine tune, basically just running through our custom LLM adapter um, built on uh, Llama 70B uh, base model. And uh, three was basically a hybrid combination of both of them. So this way you get three different outputs and depending on what comes out more interesting and more flavorful, <laughs> this is one you use. Uh, this separation of concerns improves long-term flexibility. We can unplug and play new modules, plug and play new modules without forcing changes upon downstream clients. Also, if you do any updates in your uh, GitHub, so we connected our GitHub repository uh, to Railway. So every time you push new updates to your code, it spins up 
within 10 minutes and basically now you have a new code uploaded. I really like Railway. Um, again, I have the link to the, all the solutions I mentioned. I have the link to them below. So we have the server ready. Everything looks great, but still, how can we get the, the experience of using it? Very simple. We decided to go with Flutterflow. Back to the point is that without creating and hosting the, without creating this accessibility feature for the generative AI applications, you barely, for most of the time, for most of the businesses, you're not really harnessing the most of this value that you're creating or that technology, this technology could allow you to do. Uh, if you want to learn more, how to squeeze every dollar out, out of your AI investment, follow the channel. If you need some help with your project, let me know. 